Well, we finally got here. It's the last short lecture on weather as it applies to in the second week we're talking a lot about moisture well nothing indicates moisture in the air than clouds uh, clouds is something that we need to be aware of especially certain clouds that are telling us what's happening today and possibly tomorrow or the next day so uh weather men and uh especially sailors uh, look to clouds as a, an indicator of what's going on and what could be going on. Uh, a, a friend of mine is a meteorologist, and he worked for the United States Navy uh, for quite a few years, uh, go, f sailing around the world, uh, and he was the um, part of a meteorological team that were doing research and things of that nature to this day and i've quoted him a couple of times in this uh course to this day he's a a guy that uh, nasa will contact him and say uh, hey ken can you do a little project for us he re recently did a project for zuckerberg who was trying to uh, create a way to bring the internet to everyone in the world uh, through satellites and basically Ken told him yeah that won't work because of clouds and because of obscuration of uh, not only clouds but smog fog and all of these things uh, would interrupt that message so um, yeah and he's he's the one who told me sailors to this day even with modern meteorology will look to the sky to the clouds to help them uh, pay attention to what's going on around them meteorologically or weather-wise. So, um, you know the old saying, uh, red sky in the morning, sailor take warning, red sky at night, sailors delight. Um, sailors look to the clouds. Now, I'd never heard the explanation of that before, and Ken was the one who told me recently, well, a red sky in the morning means that there is a storm in front of you and the red sky at night means there's a storm behind you so uh, i never knew that <laughs> so let's look at clouds um the clouds are the result of all these weather factors we've been talking about the sun uh, radiating its heat the earth responding to that the hot air and the cold air that are conflicting with each other and the moisture that comes off of the oceans and lakes and rivers and things of that nature so um, we talked about air stability the warm air and the cold air and how they conflict with each other in fact our greatest concern with clouds in and warm air and cold air is where the warm air and the cold air are hitting each other on the edges of those fronts those are those danger zones where we get tornadoes and um, hail hail the size of golf balls and even softballs sometimes the the severe weather is and we've got it coming right we're entering into fall the two seasons of really severe weather are uh, fall and winter when cold air is coming down from the north and warm air is coming up from the south and they hit each other so um clouds can tell us a lot about what's developing so we they we look to those clues so our our author for our book says read the clouds like you would a contour map so i want to show you a bunch of different clouds and talk about what they indicate and let's talk about some of the more docile clouds so cirrostratus clouds are very high wispy clouds that frequently uh, can be preceding a warm front um, but they um, are formed when the tops of thunderstorms that are not nearby are blown off by strong winds but also uh, we, we can just see cirrostratus clouds up in the sky and this is um, stratus and cirrus uh, have indications of things that are going on 
up high, but um, are not as great of a concern to us. So they indicate that rain is possible within the next day or two, but this is a more docile storm. This is not a big heavy duty thunderstorm. Um, Cirro Stratus. Uh, now think of Stratus. Um, we're going to talk about Stratus a little bit more in a second, but think of Stratus as being flat like a strata. Think of Cirrus as being surreal. So let's look at Cirrus. I always like to talk about Cirrus as being like surreal, like a hippie in the sky, just kind of dancing and blowing out. And so Cirrus is surreal. It's, it's, it's wispy. Uh, long and and it's it's like the clouds are dancing in the sky they're very pretty um and the you know they frequently can precede a warm front but usually when we see cirrus clouds things are pretty um we've got now what is it one thing it's very much indicating is high winds aloft because the heavy wind is what's blowing it out into those long stringy streams of moisture in the sky. Now, they're typically found very high, 20,000 feet. Um, they're composed of ice crystals that uh, originate from freezing or supercooled water. Um, cirrus generally occur in fair weather and point in the direction of the uh the wind the air movement uh at that elevation now the one thing we need to be aware of when we see cirrus clouds are very blown out is that high winds aloft can eventually come down to earth so we just need to be aware of that and know that it's very windy up above us uh given the right conditions that wind could be coming down to earth now, stratus clouds, as I mentioned, are a sign of a stable atmosphere. They're single gray, fairly uniform, um, a, a flat layer of low-level clouds. So uh, in this picture, it looks like fog. So they, they might produce a drizzle or a light rain, but they're a sign of very stable air, not um, a, a lot of upward motion. So uh, here's a great example of stratus clouds. Uh, stratus is uh, fair weather, even though they might bring uh, light rain or light drizzles. We're not getting a whole lot of, of upward motion, and upward motion is what concerns wildland firefighters. Now, there are other kinds of flat laying clouds, and there can be severe weather, and you know, when we have uh, cyclones and things of that nature, they're often associated. They, you can have a stratus type of a, a cloud, but then it's related to there's uh, other things going on. So as um, the things develop, sometimes we can have more severe weather. And a sign of severe weather, um, we don't see this uh, in the West Coast often at all, but uh, mammatus clouds are often a sign of under the cloud there's downward motion. So, um, you know, mammatus, I, I always like to joke about, you know, some weatherman named these and he looked up at the sky and it says it looks like mammaries hanging down. And that's what uh, mammatus was named after, mammary. Um, so these are clouds where big pockets of moisture are hanging below the cloud. Now, what that indicates to us is that the moisture is so heavy and the cold air is so heavy, it could come down and it could come down in a cyclonic. So mimatis clouds are oftentimes seen behind a tornado uh, situation or before it, um, but you might be getting hail shortly after. So this is a severe weather more seen in the Midwest. Another uh, concerning type of cloud is Altocumulus lenticularis clouds. Now, uh, pilots, they, they'll avoid these things. They'll fly as far as they can around them 
because they indicate strong winds aloft and also can indicate shear winds. So um, planes have been known to drop right out of the sky to lose 10,000 or more feet in elevation in a matter of seconds when they are in or around lenticularis uh, type. Now, lenticular clouds have often been uh, mistaken for flying saucers and little green men from Mars. So uh, <laughs> they do have that look to them if you look at it, but they are usually stationary, high wind speeds at the altitudes that they're at, but they can um, indicate a sheer uh, smoke column or a, a sheared out um Shear winds, they call them. So, like I said, I had a pilot in one of my classes last year, and he said, "Yes, these are this. This is a scary thing for pilots. They do not want to be anywhere near these type of uh, clouds." So, uh, I, I'm stuck. Let's try again. Okay, the, there we go. For some reason, we were stuck on the same uh, slide there for a second. Okay, well, let's get to the meat of this thing. What One of our greatest concerns is thunderstorm development. And this can happen in the front of a cold front. It can be just related to a, a lot of different reasons. We'll get to that. So we talked about air stability. And when we have warm air that's rising, um, we get... Uh, the development of thunderstorms. So uh, cumulus clouds look like big, uh, and I, I like to use the thought of accumulation, the word accumulation. So when you see an accumulation of clouds, we're going to call that cumulus. So these are big cotton balls in the sky or cotton candy in the sky. And at this point, this is probably... I'm going to guess the time of this uh, to be between 11 and 1, maybe 2, uh, on a warm day as the cumulus clouds are starting to accumulate. Now, this is the precursor to later in the day, we're going to get a full-blown thunderstorm or cumulonimbus development. Now, there are a lot of uh, in between, as those clouds mature into a thunderstorm, we get this developing cumulonimbus. So there's a couple of different types of clouds that are in that in between stage. This is cumulocongestus. And so uh, you're not going to, I don't think I'm going to ask any uh, questions on the pop quiz about these in betweeners, except for that they're an indication that we're going towards a full-blown thunderstorm. So cumulocongestus it just looks like a bunch of congested clouds. They're getting closer together, accumulating together into one mass instead of a bunch of puffy clouds all separated. Cumulo, uh, Alto cumulus castellanus, now they're mid-level clouds and they look like castles in the sky, right? They're um, little turrets or whatever arranged in lines. And again, they indicate that instability and increased moisture as the hot air is rising and it uh, expands. It gets to its dew point as it gets higher in the sky. It can't hold the moisture that's in it anymore and it starts to show as clouds. So uh, when you see these in the late morning, they're a strong in indicator that thunderstorms are developing and will be uh, seen later in the sky. Alto cumulus flocus, same thing, just big like flocked Christmas trees, I like to think of it. They look like white Christmas trees in the sky. It, these are tufts of uh, bulging upper parts and there again, that in-between stage of rugged cumulus are, now cumulus are turning into rugged cumulus and they're big puffs of sky and it's an in-between stage uh, developing up to thunderstorm activity. So when it finally matures, we call those cumulonimbus clouds. This is a great photo 
of a, a fully developed, and in fact, this is at the latter part because they develop into these big puffy clouds with a cotton ball look to them. Um, those are ice crystals in the sky, the tops of it very broccoli head looking. Um, and as it develops, it gets to where the wind starts blowing it out. And we call this that, that it's anviling. So when it starts to anvil, that is, it's at its full maturity and it's so full of energy. Now, my meteorologist friend says the energy inside this size of a uh, cumulonimbus formation or thunderstorm is like an atom bomb. It's that much energy all packed in there. Sometimes you'll see lightning going on inside it. We call that heat lightning when it's just inside it, when it's not coming down to the ground. Um, you'll have all sorts of severe weather that can happen around these types of clouds as they grow and become more and more unstable. So they're associated with cold fronts and thunderstorms. They can produce strong gusty winds. Um, when we get Virga underneath them, that's an indicator of downdrafts. That's our greatest concern. I'm going to say that again. Downdrafts is the greatest threat to firefighters uh, when fighting a, a wildland fire and there's a cold front or a thunderstorm nearby. Uh, they can have a very devastating impact on a fire. So they're, they're, you know, accompanied by lightning and thunder and the lightning is concerned because it starts a lot of fires. And we just had that recently in California where we had some uh, thunderstorms in the high Sierras that caused some lightning uh, ignited fires. But the strong gusty winds is what concerns us. And they can have a serious impact on your fire. They can drive it four different directions at once. And um, you can usually detect that de developing thunderstorm, but sometimes they're far away and moving towards us, so we need to pay attention to our weather. Now, how do they develop? Well, there's three different basic ways. There's thermal lifting, and we talked about in our previous uh, lecture, when air is heated and it rises, there, if there's adequate moisture, it's going to form a cloud. And as it rises, it expands and there's mo a lot of moisture in it. And when it gets to its dew point, um, it just can't hold any more moisture in the air. So it develops into clouds, the moisture. Uh, so it, it's most, these are most prevalent during the summer, but also in the fall, they can, they can also occur when the air is heated by a large wildland fire. We're going to talk about that right towards the end, pyrocumulus uh, formations. Cumulus clouds over a fire is an indication of extreme fire behavior. So now here's a, a pyrocumulus cloud that's forming over a fire. So these are greatly concerning and they're very unstable and they uh, are like um, a flu. The hot air is just sucking up and rising up and underneath it, it's drawing in more air underneath, feeding the fire with oxygen and uh, causing fire whirls, um, uh, down drafts, uh, cyclonic action. All of these things can happen as a result of pyrocumulus development. So they can produce strong, erratic, gusty winds. So um, here's a, a, a beautiful picture. You've seen this in our canvas. Uh, the fire down below, the dark gray smoke, and then look how it's like a straight line. So this is from the particles and the moisture in the air forming into an icy top over the fire. So the other kind of uh, lifting is orographic. Orographic lifting happens when we have a warm air mass that is moving horizontally and it encounters a mountain range, pushes it up, and that forms a cloud when it reaches that saturation point. And um, orographic and thermal lifting oftentimes work together 
in forming thunderstorms. Frontal lifting, we talked about that when we talked about um, cold air masses and warm air masses, that sometimes we get the opposite where we have hot air up high and cold air down low, and normally it's the opposite. So this happens when a cold front moves under a warm front and pushes the warm air up, and this can also cause um, thunderstorms. Convergence lifting is uh, always associated with a low pressure system, and these are uh, cold air masses and, and our storms that come from uh, Alaska and the north. Um, so as the atmosphere attempts to equalize, the air moves from the high pressure zones towards the low pressure zones. And this lifting cools the rising air, reaches saturation, clouds are formed. And this often brings our, our rain and uh, thunderstorms that come over California. Convergence lifting is the reason that low pressure systems usually in cloud, include cloudy conditions. So uh, lastly, we just want to talk about these stages of a thunderstorm. There's three stages. So there's that cumulus forming stage that we talked about. And the latter part, the, as just as it's getting before mature, is those uh, cumulus castellanus, cumulus congestus, cumulus flaccus, where it's going from a bunch of cumulus clouds to they're forming together. Then there's the mature stage where it develops and you see the broccoli heads and these big, huge, beautiful cloud formations, but uh, moving. And, and sometimes uh, I flew with my friend in Florida and you could, when we were up high, you could see these thunderstorms here and there. And I said, now, what do you do about that? And he goes, I just go around them. I just avoid them, go around them. So uh, you can see them as individuals in places like the Midwest or Florida or down in Texas. Um, we don't see that as much here because of the way California is shaped and um, yeah. So decaying or dissipating stage. So this, so the cumulus is more um, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, you start to see this forming stage. And then two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, this mature stage. And you might see anviling somewhere before six. And then eventually, as the sun goes down, it all decays, dissipates, and by the end of the evening, it's gone. So each of these stages have their own weather phenomena associated with them, and they can affect the fire uh, behavior in different ways. So we'll close with this big, beautiful thunderstorm, but uh, our book author reminds us, never underestimate the impact a nearby thunderstorm can have on your fire. So be careful out there. Okay, that's the end. Um, there is going to be a little pop quiz after this, so pay attention to clouds. There's some uh, things that you can download right after this uh, set of uh, videos. There's also a couple of videos I'm going to put up there from YouTube of uh, time-lapse formation of cumulus uh, cumulonimbus or pyrocumulus clouds. Okay, make sure to watch those. They're kind of interesting and they're short. See ya. Bye.